Hello everyone. Um, so this presentation brings you the description on circulatory system of palm medial cephalus. The circulatory system uh, of mullet is a closed type. That is, here the blood always flows through closed tubes, that is the blood vessels, uh, that is the arteries and veins. And hence the circulatory system is composed of heart, arteries and veins. Now we will uh, see the structure of heart. The heart is dorsoventrally bent tube. Uh, you can see over here it is uh, bent, it is, you know, unlike other, uh, the heart which you have studied in your previous class, here it is a bent tube, uh, dorsoventrally bent tube. It lies in the anterior portion of the body uh, cavity and uh, it is enveloped by a double layered uh, protective covering which is referred as a pericardium. Pericardium, it encloses a pericardial cavity filled with pericardial fluid. Okay, so there is pericardium uh, surrounding the heart, there is pericardial cavity within the pericardium and then in, uh, the, uh, the heart is suspended in the pericardial fluid. Okay. Uh, the heart, it, it is differentiated into three parts. You can see over here the sinus venosus, then the auricle and the ventricle. Okay, so these are three parts which composes the heart. Um, uh, separate um, Cornus arteriosus is absent, but you can see there is yet another structure which is referred as a bulbous arteriosus. This is the part. Uh, actually, um, the bulbous arteriosus, it is the um, what you call basal part of the ventral iota. Okay, the um, bulbous arteriosus here it is elastic, uh, non contractile basal portion of the ventral iota. Okay. It is muscular and hence uh, it shows uh, muscular activity. So it helps in pump, uh, actually pumping the blood. Okay, so sinus venosus and uh, auricles are the receiving chambers while the ventricles, uh, it forms the pumping organ, okay, or the pumping part. Okay, it, it, it is the chamber from where the blood is pushed to all parts of the body. Now sinus venosus opens into atrium. Uh, you can see over here, the uh, internal part, sinus venosus, uh, it is this part, this is the auricle and the sinus venosus opens into the auricle by way of an aperture which is referred as a sinoauricular aperture, okay, sinoauricular aperture and it is guarded by the sinoauricular valve or the sinoatrial valve, clear. And similarly, Atrium, uh, the auricle, it opens into ventricle uh, through auriculoventricular aperture. And this auriculoventricular aperture is further, it is um, guarded by auriculoventricular valve, right. And then you can see the opening of the ventricle to the, this is the bulbous arteriosus, okay. Bulbous arteriosus is continuing into the ventral iota. So the ventricle uh, uh, opens into the bulbous arteriosus and at the junction you can see yet another uh, what you call valve guarded opening okay so the opening of the ventricle to the bulbous uh, arteriosus is also valvular so what what, what is the function of valve actually valve it uh, prevents the back flow okay so it always uh, permits only unidirectional flow of the blood so you can see the blood is received uh, from various parts of the body by uh, by the sinus venosus. The blood flows from the sinus venosus through the sinoauricular aperture to the auricle. Once the blood reaches auricle, the sinoauricular valve it closes, and the blood cannot move back into sinus venosus. From the auricle, it moves through the auriculoventricular aperture into the ventricle, and the auriculoventricular uh, valve it closes. So by the time the ventricle fills up, it can no longer move back into auricle. The blood can, the blood pushes the, uh, what you call the valve towards the bulbous arteriosus open and the uh, contraction of the ventricle, it pushes the blood to the bulbous arteriosus. So this is the root of the blood, okay. That is from various parts of the body to sinus venosus, to the auricle, to the ventricle and from there to the bulbous arteriosus and then to the ventral iota, okay. I hope it is clear. Now, what happens is it is always unidirectional as we have already seen. The heart is always filled with deoxygenated blood and hence it is uh, this kind of a heart is referred as the venous heart. Okay, so fishes do have venous heart because 
uh, always the um, chambers are filled with deoxygenated blood. The heart is always filled with deoxygenated blood or what is referred as the venous blood. Okay. And venous heart is actually a characteristic feature of fishes. Fine. Now we are going to pass on to actually circulatory system is comprised of arterial system and venous system. Okay. So in this presentation, we will also look through the arterial system. So this is the arterial system. Uh, Arterial system can be divided into two, uh, uh, that is uh, afferent, yeah, here you can see, sorry, afferent branchial system and the efferent branchial system, okay. So, this part actually forms the afferent branchial system, right, and this part forms the efferent branchial system. What is the difference? That is afferent branchial system, it comprises the uh, arteries which carry venous blood from heart to gills okay so all those vessels which carry i mean um, blood from heart to towards the gills it is it forms the uh, apparent branchial system while those arteries which carry blood from gills to various parts of the body it forms a different uh, uh, what you call branchial system okay so uh, uh, these two systems form together form the arterial system now we can see the afferent branchial system first okay you can see that the heart is placed on the ventral side okay because it is a caudate character ventral uh, ventrally positioned heart okay so the heart is positioned on the ventral side and now we can see that uh, the um, what you call from the ventricle arises the ventral aorta okay now the basal portion of the uh, ventral aorta forms the bulbous arteriosus so uh, afferent br uh, branchial system uh, it starts with the ventral iota which leads from the ventricle okay and the basal portion it is swollen to form the bulbous arteriosus so the first part of the afferent branchial system is the bulbous arteriosus and then from there to the ventral iota okay now this as it is seen the uh, what you call bulbous arteriosus it is an elastic but it is a non-contractile expansion um, and this bulbous arteriosus, this contains striated muscles and hence it can contract, uh, it can uh, like uh, um, what you call dilate and because of the muscular activity it come, uh, recoils back into the normal condition. So when ventricles contract, what happens is the blood from the ventricles, it is pushed to the bulbous arteriosus, isn't it? So when ventricles contract, the bulbous arteriosus, it gets dilated. And this dilated bulbous arteriosus do have a larger space inside. It can receive blood from ventricles. Okay. So, ventricles contract. The bulbous arteriosus is dilated now. Then what happens? Blood from the contracting ventricle is pushed to the bulbous arteriosus. But what happens is the muscles of the bulbous arteriosus had to come back, has to come back to the normal condition. It has to recoil back. So, when it comes back to the normal condition, the space inside decreases, okay, it shrinks. Now, what happens? The, the uh, what you call blood has to pass out or move out from the bulbous arteriosus. Since ventricle to bulbous arteriosus opening is valvular, the blood reaching the bulbous arteriosus cannot move back to ventricle. It gets pushed to ventral iota, clear? So, this is how it happens. Now, beyond the bulbous, ventral iota gives out four pairs of um, efferent branchial arteries. You can see the ventral iota, it moves forward, it passes through the ventral part of the, what you call uh, the pharyngeal region and it gives off four pairs of efferent branchial artery. Okay, and these uh, efferent branchial arteries, it moves along the floor and it bends and it moves uh, like bends up towards the lateral sides. Okay, so on both the sides, it bends and it reaches the what you call this one, the gills, okay, and it passes uh, along the uh, what you call the um, the gills, fine. Yeah, so the uh, afferent branchial arteries it is innervating the gills, fine. So uh, these uh, when the blood passes through the gills, it actually helps in the gaseous um, exchange. Okay, so now it, I hope it is clear. Okay. Now, what happens is from the first uh, afferent branchial artery, or you can say the anterior most branchial artery, arises a branch which is referred as a hyoidian artery. 
okay hi ajin arfi we uh, when we discussed about respiratory system we uh, i suppose you remember the branchial arches each gill is associated with a branchial arch and you can see we named first branchial arch associated with the first gill a pair then the second the third the fourth and the fifth without any gills and we named it as ed branch right uh in front of the or anterior to the first branchial arch there is another arch known as hyoidian arch okay actually here hyoidian arch is uh, uh, in the case of uh, mullet hyoidian arch is there but gills are not present so hyoidian gill is absent and hence there is no afferent branchial artery which uh, innervates the hyoidian branchial arch uh, directly arising from the ventral aorta but the hyoidian artery arises from the first afferent branchial artery you can see over here okay so this is the hyoid arch which is referred as the pseudo arch okay pseudo arch in the sense why it is so because it doesn't have any gills okay so this is the afferent branchial system now passing on to the efferent branchial system efferent branchial system it starts from the gills and then it moves to various parts of the body so it uh, the efferent branchial system it um, the oxygenated blood from the gills it is collected by four pairs of efferent branchial arteries that is from either side okay so this is the uh, 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 one of the pairs over here that is the uh, arising from the other gill okay so four pairs of efferent branchial arteries emerges from the pharyngeal gill region and on each side uh, the four efferent branchials join together uh, to form the you can see over here this is supra branchial artery okay so from here on this side the four uh, efferent branchial arteries come together join to form the supra branchial artery on this side okay and here on the this side the uh, so, uh, the efferent branchial arteries have joined to form the this branch okay so you have the left and right supra branchial arteries and anteriorly you can see in front of the gills okay this is the first one so in front anterior to the gills these two suprabranchial arteries they join together um, and form a, a commissural vessel okay it is transverse commissural vessel they are connect the left and the right suprabranchial artery are connected together by a transverse commissural vessel and uh, similarly posteriorly that is behind the last uh, gill you can uh, paired gill you can see it is a further joined together okay uh, and posteriorly this join together and form what is known as a dorsal aorta the this is called the dorsal aorta fine so here you can see it forms a circle isn't it that is the left and right suprabranchial artery the anterior uh, transverse commissural vessel and the posteriorly it join joining together to form the dorsal aorta so, so there is a circle and this circle is referred as the cephalic circle okay so cephalic circle is formed by the anterior and posterior connective uh, what do you call it? Um, uh, connectives the two suprabranchial artery uh, together it forms a cephalic circle now from the uh, commissural vessel transverse commissural vessel you can see a pair of posterior carotid vessel arises para, uh, posterior carotid artery everywhere in every organism carotid means the artery which passes to the head okay we also do have the carotid it passes uh, along the, through the neck to the head region okay so carotid means the artery to the um, the vessel to the head okay so you have the posterior carotid artery now what happens to the dorsal aorta dorsal aorta as the name suggests it passes dorsally it runs to the tail region and along its way it gives off branches to different organs okay. the major uh, arteries emerging from the dorsal aorta include the celiac artery you can see over here the dorsal aorta giving off the celiac artery uh, the celiac means it is related with the uh, alimentary canal okay the celiac artery it, uh, it uh, um, branches to stomach and liver then uh, mesenteric artery to intestine and pancreas uh, you can see over here in the mesenteric artery and the uh, artery over here to the gas bladder or the swim bladder or the air bladder okay the gas bladder artery to the air bladder then further posteriorwards it gives off a pair of pectoral arteries to pectoral fin region a pair, then paired renal arteries to kidneys then a pair of gonadal artery to refractive organs a pair of pelvic arteries to pelvic fin region uh, and uh, paired series of segmental arteries to body wall 
and terminally the dorsal aorta continues to the tail as a caudal artery. Okay, fine. Okay, thank you.